Thanks for the invitation, both for the uh, being it's a minor for Rania's PhD that enjoyed to, to read, but also to, to be part of this workshop in which I'm really enjoying in the different elements. And uh, this is a continuation of, of Susan's talk um, and an invitation also. Uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, many things of the, the, the two prior presentations. And uh, Susan was saying, oh, we, we shall not say creativity. We shall use the term invention because this is more uh, the kid uh, choosing their own problems and not taking the problems from the school or from the adults, then I will propose something in the middle of the spectrum, which is something that is ill-defined problem sol solving with uncertainties, uh, uh, link it to the, to, to the first presentation, uh, which is in which uh, kids can consider, um, uh, which kids can consider um, not the problem as being totally uh, set up by the an external ad, uh, adjunct uh, teacher or situation, but uh, in a situation in which kids can uh, uh, pat a lot of themselves uh, because there's some ill-defined problem-solving activities in which uh, the ill-defining uh, uh, state of the of the problem allow the kid to, to complete that. Then um, uh, through that, I'm also uh, complaining. I'm, uh, uh, I has been in France mo most of my life, even if I'm not French, uh, no, I'm not born French, um, and, but I became French. That means I learned to complain um, uh, and be critical on, uh, on things. Then uh, through my presentation, I, I will be uh, sharing problems, my problems, okay? This is, will be like group therapy about um, the difficulties on uh, computational learning science and how we can do research in which we are modeling um, learning processes and what are the current uh, limits uh, we are facing. Then um, I'm start uh, insulting myself. This way you don't need to do that later on. I'm an epistemological bastard. That means that for the French system, I don't fit anywhere um, because I, at the same time, uh, I'm a post bigotian person. Uh, and at the same time, I love to collaborate with the persons who are doing uh, computational neuroscience and even other approaches uh, in research. Then uh, now I, I'm assuming uh, uh, this uh, position is that being a curious, uh, epistemological uh, bastard who tries to understand certain type of phenomena related to ill-defined problem solving. Then, um, I don't know if you are seeing difference there. Then anyone can share difference you are seeing in this picture? Okay, then. Okay, maybe there's just a hairy thing. There's more hair in one side and then another, okay? But uh, probably uh, mammals uh, are curious about objects around them. And uh, this is something I love to play with. It's uh, cubes. Then um, when you're putting cubes in front of someone, persons are curious of, um, of playing with these objects, especially because they are unknown uh, objects which raise um, a, a situation of uncertainty about what you need to do with that. But also another aspect uh, within my work is uh, I really enjoyed, uh, I, I was a, a happy kid uh, having uh, a family allowing me to play in, mud, in um, muddy puddles, then like the Peppa Pig family were uh, <laughs> um, uh, jumping on muddy puddles. And um, uh, this playful uh, way of, uh, of, um, of uh, having the opportunity to learn is, is something I think it's one of the natural ways uh, mammals and humans, uh, mammals, including humans, um, are um, enjoying uh, to discover their environment. Then this is something that is uh, also red line uh, within my teaching and uh, research is that um, we are uh, we are uh, kids or grown up kids, uh, which still can enjoy um, uh, having playful interaction. And I enjoyed Susan, um, um, uh, and uh, the first presenter uh, suggestion on how we can raise curiosity and help teachers uh, provide these kind of situations because uh, one of the aspects uh, in um, in our press service teachers um, the training I'm trying to uh, to convey is that um, a teacher is uh, mostly a person who creates situations in which kids and or adults 
can uh, be, in a, uh, be um, uh, interested in knowing more about something than uh, um, in the words uh, you are using, maybe uh, trying to activate their own curiosity, intrinsic motivation, and trying to figure out how uh, different phenomena uh, works on. Uh, and another aspect is that uh, uh, learning is not easy. And uh, this is at the same time something mm, terrible <laughs> because we need a lot of time to understand how humans learn and even uh, spending a lot of time, uh, this is uh, still a very complex aspect. And um, uh, for this reason also, uh, the way um, we decide to, uh, to, um, to address the research uh, difficulties is that uh, uh, we accept that uh, learning is complex but then we can simplify the type of task we are uh, evaluating. Then I will raise th three ideas in, uh, in this short presentation. One is about um, um, uh, defending epistemological pluralism as a way uh, also of um, um, going through um, the understanding of uh, complex phenomena, such ill-defined problem solving. Uh, how concept formation, then how we uh, we raise concepts through creative problem solving and uh, then uh, sharing my problems on <laughs> what are the research challenges we are having uh, doing that. Then uh, when, um, in, uh, when we engage participants from seven years old to 83 years old in front of these four cubes, robotic cubes, um, uh, one of the aspects we aim to understand is concept formation. And then how uh, we figure out how things work when uh, there is a cert uh, certain um, unknown technology and a, a situation and a problem which brings a lot of uncertainty. Then uh, this is, the situation is that we uh, b um, give you four cubes without telling you about how it works, okay? And uh, we ask you to build a vehicle and uh, make move this vehicle from the red point to the black point. Uh, kids are not surprised, but adults, most adults, uh, show a kind of socio-cognitive conflict because uh, they like, my God, uh, are you asking me to do a vehicle with four cubes? <laughs> Makes no sense. There's a gap between the problem um, that uh, is uh, posed and the problem uh, which needs to be solved, which require engaging in interactive, uh, manipulative, artifact-mediated uh, problem solving. Okay. Then uh, for doing that, um, uh, we are uh, having a developmental perspective. That means that we start at age seven, because before age seven, uh, the, the understanding of the instructions is not exactly the same. Then maybe on the next years, uh, we will engage with uh, younger kids. But for the moment, we started at seven years old. But we are engaging also older kids, uh, even in retirement uh, houses, uh, we are, which are very happy to uh, enjoy in this kind of uh, ill-defined problem solving. But also we are considering diversity in, in relation to neurodiversity and functional diversity as a very positive aspect also on a problem solving with manipulatives, uh, because for example, um, kids um, with uh, um, um, seasighting difficulties, uh, we, we have observed they are even more systematic in the way of uh, creative problem solving than the ones who are uh, fully functional in the in their vision. Then uh, having diversity uh, in terms of neurodiversity or functional diversity is, is should not be considered at, at something uh, that is a reduction, but a different way of exploring the world and uh, figuring out how to uh, problem solve in ill-defined manipulative uh, situations. Why epistemological pluralism? Then I, I uh, the the good thing at being remote is that no one is screaming or making um, strange faces when uh, um, we're defending epistemological uh, pluralism. Um, uh, first, uh, on my career, I say, well, I will need to find my community. I need to find my family in research. Uh, but I was too much interested in different families. Then I was feeling bad because I was like, oh my God, I I'm, I'm have not a clear view of, of what is my epistemology and my methodology. And then coming back to Papert, Seymour Papert, I was like, oh my God, that exists. Epistemology, epistemological pluralism is such a thing for some persons. Then I, I was super happy to know that I was... Uh, uh, not um, somewhat with a big problem in relation to to uh, to self uh, to the belonging aspect uh, on the um, 
uh, on the research side, but uh, we can, uh, uh, there's persons who self-identified as epistemological pluralists, and which I think and I defend as a way of being very humble in saying um, probably um, a lot of different epistemological uh, and ontological perspectives are right, but we are maybe not good enough in our cognition uh, to be aware about the, the the complexity of phenomena and probably different epistemological ways of knowing has elements uh, to provide for the understanding of this uh, complexity. Okay, then uh, is um, is going um, against this methodological tribalism, and this is something that sadly happens a lot in the learning science person saying, are you a didactician or are you a didactician of that? Or are you a cognitive person? And just because you are declaring uh, your epistemology, there are already persons hating you just for that. Okay. Then um, pluralistic coexistence is about uh, being humble and saying that probably uh, there are different ontological ways of knowing phenomena. Then it's like having different glasses. But the issue is that you cannot um, do that alone because you cannot have all the classes at the same time. Then you need to have friends, research friends. Okay, this way you can uh, go through this um, understanding of complex phenomena uh, and also overcoming these um, uh, these requirements to be at the same time task specific, but also sociocultural. Um, contextually uh, considering aspects, but also uh, considering um, the materialistic, dialogic uh, way of knowing the world, okay? Um, so, okay, then uh, one of the, the, the aspects on considering that is that uh, 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 accepting that when looking at a certain phenomena, persons playing with cubes, for example, or persons building Legos, or persons uh, going uh, after a ball or playing a ball game, um, uh, you can see it at the neuron level, and this is fantastic, but you can see it at the curricular level and uh, discuss why we have changed the curriculum this way or this other. And this is right too. Uh, the issue is that uh, uh, if we want to discuss together with these different colleagues, we need to, to focus on, a, on, a, on the same phenomena. And this is uh, where um, looking at, at the, well, and it is just uh, for you in case you don't know about the learning science uh, complexity. This is just a small photo made by colleagues uh, after three years of work, um, which is not complete about <laughs> the different approaches on the learning science. Uh, then for that, um, I love uh, Pessoa uh, uh, citing Otley saying that understanding had to proceed proper definition. That means that uh, if we take into account a phenomenon, and then look at the different uh, um, ontologies and um, uh, methodological and, uh, and epistemological approaches, maybe we can better understand things, okay? Then there's this task that is the Tower of Hanoi. I'm in love with this task. Uh, and one of the things I appreciate is that you can read about this task within different traditions of research. Uh, that means that Tower of Hanoi is a phenomena that has been defined in a way which allow um, researchers from different perspectives to, to make sense of this phenomena. Then uh, when designing a new task, uh, my goal was to do something um, on the one side playful, ill-defined because problems, uh, classical problem solving in the school is uh, very far from reality. And something that could be uh, fun to do because if you were doing research uh, is to have fun and at least, at least it's one of my, my positions as a researcher. And uh, also uh, having the possibility to collect as much data as possible than a task that is not uh, so long. Then the idea has to be in creating this uh, small task, uh, ill-defined problem solved with four cubes, which limits the number of configurations possible, and then collaborate with colleagues from different um, from really different research perspective in order to make sense of this task. But for that, we need to have a common grammar. Then we created an ontology and Chloe Mercier, who is a, um, a, a researcher, now a, a doctor uh, from a Nemozin team, uh, has uh, advanced this ontology after the work of Lisa uh, before. And thanks to this ontology, but also to the a corpus of data of uh, seven years in which every person I meet I make them play the, the task. Then we have now a big corpus of data. 
uh, then we can start uh, playing uh, with this data in a way that is uh, more interesting. Okay, then um, very rapidly on this, uh, just bringing also on the table on this uh, aspect of um, of curiosity. I think also what which is super interesting is in interactive um, um, interaction with uh, manipulative objects. How also this um, 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 loop between um, uh, the mental world and the physical world is being done through these different interactions and how this is also um, um, a way of enacting um, uh, instruments in a, which was a rubber del um, uh, mediating instrument approaches. Uh, and then very uh, rapidly for ending, just at the end, is about uh, research challenges. Uh, a lot of research challenges, but uh, fantastic research challenges. One of them uh, is the multimodal data streams. Then um, I'm a learning scientist. That means that uh, I'm not um, uh, the person who is more effective in optimizing things. Uh, then the, the goal, uh, initial goal was been to uh, record videos and code the videos uh, you are doing um, yes coding um, coding evenings and nights instead of Netflix nights. Um, then the the goal uh, in um, in later stages will be to automatize a little bit more uh, the way we uh, we identify configurations in order to have um, a more autom automatized way of having this data. And through that, this is uh, one way we try to uh, to advance the computational learning science. That means learning science in which we accept a pluralism approach, but also in which we aim to model uh, the phenomena we are studying through a multimodal approach in which uh, neuro colleagues can go on to biophysiological measures and also colleagues that are more on the didactic part, etc., can take a look into these aspects and from time to time run it together through workshops or through cross um Cross fertilization uh, studies in which we can make sense, for example, of conflict of motives as something that is a very post Vygotskian concept, but also something that appears uh, as a phenomena in um, in the neurocognitive science. Then, thank you very much. Thank you, Margarita. Um... Do you have do you have any questions in the room? Or maybe I have a, I have one question, Margarida, about uh, about both your task and what you said at some point. So you said it's very important uh, to 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 understand what others think. Um, in your task, do you let uh, people? Um, express what goes through their mind verbally and do you try mm -hmm. to analyze it and if yes what's your approach to do that yeah we we did that uh, we have two modalities in the task one is individual and the other is in, is in the ads, uh two persons uh, problem solving together and we have gone through the analysis we have a paper published on the um, on the um, uh, uh, collaborative problem solving in this uh, type of ill-defined uh, task and we can see uh, these aspects of uh, concept formation going through uh, through the process. But uh, actually, we are having this uh, um, sound data, which we have not exploited yet, in which there's a lot of aha of different types appearing at different moments. And we aim to look into the insights uh, aspects of the, of the task uh, later on. But uh, what I'm really happy is that we have um, a, a corpus that uh, can um, allow us to, to play with the data for the next 20, 30 years. Uh, then this is part of the next uh, research um, uh, challenge uh, on understanding also this uh, thinking aloud and uh, um, uh, natural expressions that persons are, are doing during the task, which actually uh, most of persons do, and whatever their culture and uh, language of origin, etc., and even their age, this is quite universal to, uh, to, to listen to the aha in different, um, through different accents within the task. Yeah, thank you very much. Welcome. Time for coffee. Ah, one question for, by, from Hélène and time for coffee. I'm curious yeah. about um, the, your result uh, from uh, older adults. Uh, do, do, 
do you observe a difference uh, mm -hmm. to aging uh, in, in the task? Yes, and uh, what is surprising is that uh, 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 older adults feel le less time pressure and they are more uh, original uh, uh, within the, 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 um, the divergent thinking components. They are more original than adults. Adults are the worst, okay? Adults uh, self-inflict their self-time pressure and they assume that uh, problem solving is about time, time performance. Oh, but in our task, we are not uh, saying that there's any temporal constraint, but all adults, uh, most adults, there are some outliers, but uh, most adults uh, in, um, uh, assume that uh, if you are proposing them to solve a problem, the best way will be to do the fastest way, which actually is not the case with kids, and which actually is not the case with older adults, which on the opposite, they love engaging in new things. This is for especially for the ones in retirement house, for them, that was the, the event of the day or maybe the event of the week. Uh, they were exploring things. They were explaining even their own, oh, when I was a kid, I was playing, no, no, no. Then they were uh, using this activity in order also to do a lot of expression, which was absolutely uh, fantastic. But uh, uh, actually, at the task, uh, average time is three minutes with older adults, but average time is more than 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, Jamie. Uh, I was just curious about if you if they asked for help if you provided it or not, and if they if you did provide help if you saw developmental differences in help seeking behaviors. We are not. Uh, uh, we we try to do the task with the minimal intervention. That means the persons are provided with a push button to listen to instructions, and we disappear. Okay, then uh, we provide the task, we make them feel okay. Uh, the idea is that never mention math or problem solving, etc. only play activity. Okay, and then persons are given this push button, they can uh, listen to the push button uh, as many times as they want, and then we control uh, how many times they go to the problem posing thing, uh, going pushing through the, the push button. But we are not helping, which actually is very hard for experimenters. Because when you are, uh, when the person is not reducing the problem space and it's stuck in problem solving, which happens, um, uh, we we want to help, but uh, we need to we we uh, we are doing other things. We we don't help. Actually, there are some adults who um, uh, drop out of the task, and these persons are persons who engage in the task, having uh, a fantastic great idea that they don't want to inhibit. For example, thinking that the, the wheels will work in a certain way, then these persons were not flexible enough to inhibit the first uh, non-successful um, ideas. Then we are seeing so that creativity is about the capacity of inhibiting ideas, which actually uh, some persons with executive function difficulties are having difficulties because they are very good at generating ideas, but they have a difficulty on having in mind the, uh, the, the, the what was successful and not in order to avoid entering again in the, in the same problem. Can I ask one quick follow-up? Yeah, oh, last okay. question. Um, so do you have a hunch or a speculation about the reason why adults are the worst at this? Do you think it's some inherent characteristic of lifespan development? Or do you think you would find cross-cultural differences or differences as a function of say work experience? I, I will say, um, well, the discussion we got with a lot of educators and uh, teachers is about uh, we adults, uh, <laughs> and we have a lot of, uh, of teachers in our studies uh, and pre-service teachers. Uh, it's uh, the, the reason they are providing is that um, we have been trained to do as fast as possible. Uh, then even if the instructions were not saying to us to do as fast as possible, we assume that to be um, um, a quality. Even there are persons after the uh, end of the task is that uh, was uh, uh, was I fast enough? Then for them that was a criteria. Even if this was not an explicit criteria, then doing things fast has been uh, intrinsically uh, um, uh, integrated in our uh, way of working. 
which actually is maybe something related to educational systems or just our way of living, etc. But um, uh, most educators were saying that, uh, yes, they try to do as fast as possible because they assume that uh, um, problem solving is is even better if you are doing the uh, if you are problem solving fastest. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Margarida. Thanks again. Thank you.